Armory Disc Golfers, the reason that you and I watch YouTube videos like the one that you've just clicked on is because we know that we could and probably should be throwing farther than we currently do. And I don't have one simple tip to get you 50 feet easy on your throws, but what I do have are three simple things that you could work on that maybe get you 10 to 20 feet each. And if you apply them all over the next couple weeks, well, you do the math. Before we get started, I just want to say this isn't just a disc golf tips and tricks channel, but I have had some things on my mind the past couple weeks that I wanted to get out there, so I made videos on them. That being said, the first little thing that can make a big difference in your game is getting the disc farther away from your body. So the first thing is to get the disc farther away from your body when you're pulling through. If the disc is far enough away from your body, then you have room for the disc to travel through without having to round. Rounding is when you reach too far back or too close to your body, and instead of being able to pull from a straight line from A to B, you have to go in and then around before you continue forward. This hurts velocity, it also hurts consistency, because if you're pulling through from here to here and you release a little bit early, well, the disc is still traveling on this plane. But if you're rounding in a circle and you release a little bit early, the disc could come out here, or if you release a little late, the disc could come out here. So it creates wide variance. But it also reduces your velocity. You don't want that whenever you're going for maximum distance. Another reason to get the disc away from your body is because when you pull it in too tight to your body, you end up leaving the disc behind in the power pocket. And it's easier to see from this angle. When you hit the power pocket, you should be here. You want this 90 degrees, you know, 90 degrees forearm, 90 degrees uh, at your shoulder. But also you want the disc to be tucked into your chest. You don't have to wrap your wrist and curl it around, but you want the outside edge of the disc tucked into your chest. And if the disc is, if your arm is too close to your body, what you'll see a lot of people do is this sort of thing. And you may see this on some of your own videos if you've ever recorded yourself where the outside edge of the disc is trailing behind. And you'll see a lot of people pulling through like this. A lot of amateur uh, form videos, perhaps your own. I know I've seen it on my own all the time. This kills your rotational energy as well as your speed coming through, like I mentioned previously. Instead of being able to get the rotation as you, as you throw the disc through the power pocket, instead of the disc being able to rotate all the way from here and around, now you're only getting from here to here. That's creating, that's less distance that the, the disc is traveling. Velocity is just a difference in distance over time. So if you can create more spin and create more distance for the disc to travel through through the same period of time, you're gonna throw faster. If you throw faster, the disc is gonna go farther. Look at these clips of Eagle and Page, Simon Lazat, Anthony Barella, all these people absolutely crush and you'll notice among other things in their form that they all have the similarity of getting the disc tucked into their chest so it can whip out and explode at the end of the power pocket. You cannot do that if the disc is too close to your body. big difference is to slow down the first half of your pull through. When you go faster, you're more prone to making mistakes. Now, I could just tell you, slow is smooth, smooth as far, just throw nice and slow. And you know, I know, we all know, that sounds really good in theory, and we'll go out into a field, and we'll throw nice and smooth a couple times, and maybe we'll see some improvements. 
And then after three or four throws of that, we start thinking, okay, 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 okay. I've got it. My form is perfect now. And I just want to huck. <laughs> the problem with that is you reintroduce all those things that you've been working on fixing when you do that. Something that's an easy balance in between the two so you can still try to throw hard while maintaining good form is to slow down just this first half of the pull through. It's much easier to apply tip number one and all the other tips that I'm sure you're, you've been working on in your distance game. If you just take this first reach back part to the power pocket, nice and slow. I don't mean literally slow motion, but if, if instead of pulling through full speed, if you just go 60, 75%, and just make sure that you're getting from full extension coil backwards. If you go from full coil to power pocket and you're in a good position here, then you can pull through, you can snap through pretty quickly right here and you're gonna see a lot of improvements if you're struggling to get to the power pocket in the first place. This is something that I've applied in my own game and it's helped me consistently reach the top 90, 95% of what I consider my distance throws to be regularly instead of sometimes I'll hit it perfectly going full speed and I'll have a maximum distance drive but a lot of times I'll do something wrong along the way. I'll drag and leave the disc behind or I'll reach up too high and create nose angle issues or something. And I just have a wonky drive. So if you start slow, get to the power pocket, and then once you get to the power pocket, allow yourself to just snap out of it from there, I think you're gonna see a lot more consistency and a lot more distance on your average drive. Number three, a little thing that can make a big difference is to fix your nose angle. Now this can be a little difficult, but I'm gonna give you a few quick, easy things to work on that can start you on this journey. Okay, so to fix your nose angle, just a couple quick things to get you on your way. As you reach through, you want the disc to remain below your wrist. Now if you look, I'll throw the, the, the screenshots back up here so you can see and I'll just talk over them again. As pros are reaching through, you can see the disc is below their wrist. And now what this causes is as the disc comes out, it's going to be on a nose down release. And you want that because the disc is a wing. And if you have it nose down, it'll stabilize a little bit, it'll fly pretty much flat, and it'll do its lift and glide thing <laughs> as it's out there in the air. However, if you get the disc above your wrist, then what you're going to notice is as you pull through, if you were to just take your wrist and snap it from here in a straight angle, the way that your disc is supposed to work, you would throw it down into the ground. Your body doesn't want to do that. So what your body is going to compensate and do is when you get into this angle, you're going to swivel and you're going to try to correct the disc to a perfectly flat plane. And when you do that, you're creating this upward motion on the front nose of the disc. And so it's gonna come out nose up. And when a disc comes out nose up, wind hits the bottom of it, it causes it to stall and fade early. So point the disc down as you get it to your power pocket as you're pulling through. If you point it down here, you should be able to release it nose down here. The second thing for creating a nose down angle of release is to reach back lower. Now the reason this works is because again, if you want the disc below your wrist, one, it helps if you start down here. But two, as you pull up, your body knows you don't want to throw the disc on a normal throw if you're just trying to throw it flat in front of you. Your body knows you don't want to continue throwing here, so what it's going to do is going to correct and then try to get the nose down. It's sort of like what we talked about in the last tip, instead of your body trying to correct from here to a perfectly flat plane, which is normally gonna cause nose up issues, if you're going up, you're gonna be creating a nose down angle as you pull through. And this is why if you have a high reach back, again, your body knows you don't want to throw from here, straight line down into the ground. So if you're reaching back too high, it's nearly impossible to keep the disc perfectly flat <laughs> as you pull through up here. No one's shoulders are that flexible. So if you reach through high, what you are almost certainly doing, I've seen this time and time again, is in my own throws as well as other guys that I've been working with, 
is that as you pull through, the disc is gonna start high. It may not be this high, it may even be down here. But then as you pull down, now your body wants to correct and throw back up. And when you do that, you're creating this swooping motion that's gonna create a nose up angle. Way to trick your body into fixing the nose angle issue is to start lower, and then as you pull up, your body will create this nose down angle of release. You know, what's funny though, for real is, on a couple of these throws I'm working on, I'm just thinking, Nick, make sure that you get the disc tucked into your body or, or make sure that your pull through is low because it's gonna look really stupid if you tell people to do that and then you don't do it on your practice throws. <laughs> and actually, some of them were just as far as my max distance throws normally are. And I'm only trying to throw 75, 80% just to prove a point. So, something's there. So those are three little things that hopefully make a big difference to your game. Let me know how they work out for you. And like I said, only work on one or two at a time because if you try to do too much at once, you're just gonna get everything fuzzled up. And it's not gonna go well. So do one at a time. Hopefully they add 10, 15, 20 feet each. And maybe in a couple weeks, you'll have that 50 feet easy <laughs> that we're all looking for. If y'all would, please like the video, comment what you want to see next. And subscribe if you haven't already because we got more coming your way. Thanks for watching. And until the next time, fight the good fight.